CRM is a very hot topic these days in the computing world. The funny thing is, it's not new by any means. CRM is like ERP, is like any three-letter acronym in the IT world, which actually spells out M-E-S-S. -S. Because these products try to do everything for everybody, and they require full-time commitment, and usually we're not told about that up front. So we're gonna start right at the very beginning with what is customer relationship management? I can tell you from my view, and this probably is not in a book anywhere, that is what I need to do on a daily basis to know what needs done to service my clients. Now, I'm a consultant along with the rest of the crew here, and what we do is we engage clients and we come on site or remotely solve their problems. So the first thing we need is a to-do list an action item, a task list, statement of work, something like that. Okay, that's the primary function that we do. Well, typically we get a piece of paper, you know, it's all signed off and everything, and it has some high-level specifications for what it is we're going to do. Well, then Kevin will get on site and dig in, and there are details that surface out of the project. All of us have this in what we do. You always start with the general, and you get to the detail, and very rarely are they a direct linear match. Okay, those details are really what we need to manage. And I can tell you the way that I do it traditionally is with pieces of paper. Okay. So does anyone have a scenario in their mind of what would be the ideal project management or customer relationship management tool? I actually do, and I see part of it right there. It's the way we're all going to work in the future, but we're a long, long way from it. My view is it's going to be tablet-based. Number one, these things were outsold by handheld computing devices last year. First time ever. Smartphones, everyone has them. Kind of small. Can only do so much, even when you rotate, pivot, things like that. So what we need is a tool that can easily capture the information that we gather when we're doing our duties, as well as present it to us in a way that tells us what we need to do next. I hate to say I probably spend 15% of all my work effort doing something related to tracking what I just did, what I'm going to do, or where I'm supposed to be. Another problem most consultants have is usually we're supposed to be in two places at the same time. If there's trouble over here and you have an appointment over there, that's what causes the conflict. Okay, so my vision of it is, what will happen is we'll all be using these very slick tablets and they will use the cloud. Anyone that's been here recently knows Microsoft is pushing the cloud very hard. And the cloud is just a computer somewhere else that we don't control. All right, it's gonna have all of our data in it. So if we can come up with a nice user interface on a tablet, we actually are halfway there. A tablet is kind of manageable. I didn't see you struggling when you came in with it, but I'm actually like this with my laptop. And then we need all the power and everything else. So something along that line. Okay, my point is that CRM and all of these solutions are evolving. Okay, Sage has one. Salesforce has one. Microsoft has theirs. This is actually the fourth version of Microsoft's. And what it means is that they're all evolving. Just like we had Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows 7. Okay, so the good thing is it means that there are gonna be features now they get one step closer to that utopia of, hey, I have a single place that I can do everything. But what we're going to find out as we dig into it a little bit is it does what it usually does, and it puts a little bit more burden on us. Okay, the benefits of an appropriate CRM solution are significant. Okay. Just out of the work day that I have, and I typically do database work, either development or database administration. So I'm down in a system and I'm running complicated procedures and I'm returning data and I generate Excel files, I give it to the client, I do reports and all that. At the end of any given day, I probably have created, let's just say, 20 new documents that need to be put somewhere. The thing I dread most is being taken off a project before it's finished and having to come back two weeks later because who knows where everything is. 
if we had a centralized place that we could put it, we would be able to do it, especially if it was easy to manage. So there's some benefit to trying to get to this utopia. Okay. The number one challenge that we are going to face as we undertake this is the us versus I challenge. Okay. Most of us use Outlook right now. Outlook lets us have tasks, calendars, contacts, etc. Definitely messages. But if I'm here and I work for George and I have my contact list, there is no guarantee that that list is usable by George. Well, no problem. We have shared contacts. How many people use shared contacts in their office? Okay, good. Good. Do they automatically and always work the way that we want? There tends to be little hiccups in them. And shared calendars? That means public folders. Public folders are a nightmare, at least they used to be. That's actually where SharePoint came from. SharePoint is another effort at trying to give us this utopia of we can just work and the system can kind of guide us as we do what we do and have the information available to ourselves and the others. So the number one challenge that you're going to find as you undertake CRM is that you cannot think me. You have to think team. And many companies talk team. In the big companies, that's very difficult to do. But I'm assuming, please correct me if I'm wrong, we're primarily small businesses here. That means that we have a manageable team. That means it's possible, which is very encouraging. OK, so for a quick introduction of Dynamics, we're going to go to the main Microsoft Dynamics site and just take a look at what their high-paid marketing firm is telling us. OK, like all things, they give us a bunch of links here. And the first time I came here, I didn't even know where to click. OK, one thing we could see is that it appears that Microsoft's Customer Relationship Management, officially known as Dynamic CRM 2011, <coughs> is attempting to address three primary areas. That would be sales, customer service, and marketing. So sales and marketing and customer service. They are positioning it out there so that you could run a service industry with it, you could run your own marketing with it, and you could manage the sales process with it. Okay? To me, this is the most <clears throat> visible aspect of what this site does. But I would encourage you all to try to come to this site and spend a few minutes because it is loaded with information. Okay, CRM comes in a couple different flavors. The one we're gonna be talking about today is online and it's hosted by Microsoft. Again, I mentioned the cloud. The cloud is really nothing more on a very simple level as computers somewhere else. We do have the ability to have our CRM data hosted on the cloud, which would mean it's available anywhere at any time as long as you have some computing device. And yes, your mobile devices will work with this. Although, it'll be a little bit awkward because of the small screen. We can also bring dynamic CRM on site. I still have some clients that I work with that have a fear of the cloud. Anyone that's been watching the cloud over the last two months may have noticed that it took a couple of black eyes. Okay, Amazon's cloud service went down. Um, Cisco had a cloud service that went down within just a few hours. And these are companies with major money and major commitments out there. And they're having trouble with that. So for some people, that's really frightening. The experience that I've had using Microsoft's CRM on the cloud is they don't have those outages yet, but that's just something that you need to balance. Let's say you're not willing to take that chance that the cloud is not available or that your big provider was hacked or something. You could bring Dynamics on site if you have a server. I'm assuming most of you have a server in your office. Most of us still do. The cost to do that is roughly $5,000 plus anywhere from $100 to $1,000 per user. So it's not an insignificant investment, but again, if it gives us this utopia that we know all that we need to, what's due and how to service our clients, it might be worth it. The online version, which we're about to look at in just a second, is roughly $40 per month per user. So just a quick drill with the math, it's almost $500 per user. So that's something I would say definitely give some thought to. Okay, we're about to log in 
to the dynamic site. And the first thing I want to comment is, does anyone know what a Windows Live ID is? Because, yes, the text do. You do, Brian? Can you explain it succinctly to people? Because I've been struggling with that. Succinctly, uh, Microsoft's attempt at trying to have a single sign-on um, for a multitude of products. Yes. It's the same as like the Google password, right? Where you give your Google password and then you give your Google Docs and your Google Calendar and yeah. Google and it's, it's very similar. What it is is any site that you go to requires you to have an account. Microsoft, for some reason, wants us to have a Windows Live account. And it allows us to create a Windows Live account that uses our current email address. That's the confusing part, I think. So you can have your email address at your company, and that is the account on your server, but also out in Windows Live that is used. Anyhow, the point being that sometimes the user IDs that you use to get into Windows Live do not match your email address. For example, it took exception at the fact that there's a hyphen in Simplex IT. So I had to create a new user account at Hotmail. So my Simplex account to deal with Microsoft CRM is a Hotmail account. I just think that's weird. So basically, if you log into the window of the live, then you have access to all of your accounts of Microsoft. That has always always been the goal of it, and it used to be called Passport, but my experience is that it doesn't work seamlessly. Now, much of that could be because I don't spend enough time worried about email systems. Frankly, it's something I almost never work on. I definitely work on database servers, and we just get the email config from that. So maybe some of the other guys could comment about that later. It does work pretty well. I, I have 40 <coughs> Microsoft accounts, but you have to, you have to purposely link them. Gotcha. I have similar ones, like with my Microsoft certifications and things like that, but they've been built up over like 10 and 15 years, and I'm sure they're not linked appropriately. It seems like they always need a new Windows Live. ID. Anyhow, just something to keep in mind there. Okay, this is very nice. Okay. What I mean by that is this user interface looks almost identical to the Outlook client. When we run Outlook on our laptop or our desktop at work, we call that the Outlook client. The other side of that is the mail server, typically Exchange. So the Outlook client is this. Okay. And this is the dynamic CRM user interface, which has the same basic nodes over here. Okay, so what we have is we have different sections here that give us different functionality. Now there's not too much data in here so a lot of it won't work. However, we can load sample data and one thing I'm going to encourage you all to do is the 30-day sample at the end. And I'm sorry, the 30-day trial at the end of the process. Okay, one thing that's new is dashboards and key performance indicators and all these other things that kind of make you scratch your head and say how did we ever get by without them there's a school of thought and i believe in it that we learn better with images we gather data better with images you know most of us would stop if the stop sign was red and had no letters but if it was just black letters on a white sign that said stop we probably wouldn't so Microsoft is embedding a lot of graphics and visual indicators into the new packages in order to help us quickly assimilate our data. I see two issues that are worthy of discussion there. Number one, we have to know what that indicator means, so there's still a little bit of a learning curve. Number two, we have to be able to see it. My number one complaint with the new software these days is there's functionality there, there's functionality there, there's functionality here, there's functionality there. You can't always tell if it's just giving you status, giving you information, or if you're supposed to click it and do something. Okay, so what this is, is this is a section called the workplace, where the expectation is, is as end users, we're going to come here on any given day 
and know what we need to do. As we create activities in Dynamics, if they are assigned to us, they will appear here. So the idea being, let's say I'm a very overworked, tired consultant, and someone else is managing all the contact with the client. I'm basically just the guy that's sitting here grinding out the work. This would be ideal, because I could just see what I need to do. Okay, next difficult task. Okay, do it. Okay, I'm gonna mark it as complete. My list goes away. This is the start of this utopia that I very much want to see happen. But I want things to dynamically adapt as you're working through them so that you can stay focused on what you need to focus on next. Okay. <clears throat>